Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are going to take a look at the subject of factoring by grouping. All right, this is a subject I personally love. I find it very elegant, uh, but I know it, it bugs a lot of students, so we're going to take care of that right here. Okay, when do you factor by grouping? Um, classically, you factor by grouping when you're looking at a polynomial that has four terms. You can also use it when you've got one that has six terms or eight terms, but we're going to look today at the um, when you've got four terms. Okay, so I'm going to share screen and we're going to just get right on into it. Okay, so here is a polynomial with four terms. So we have our x cubed term, our x squared, our x, and our numerical term. All right, so we can't just throw this into the quadratic formula because it's not a quadratic equation because it's got this extra term. Okay, so factoring by grouping looks like this. You start by grouping your polynomial into two halves. So now I have this first group and I have this second group. And what you are asking yourself is for each individual group, what is the greatest common factor to these two terms? All right. So when I look at the x's in these terms, I have an x cubed and I have an x squared. So an x squared is the greatest common factor to both of those. And I have a 1 and a 4. So a 1 is the greatest common factor. All right. And what I'm going to do now within this part of it is I'm going to say, all right, when I factor my x squared term out of my x to the third, and factor means divide, what's left? So when I divide x to the third by x squared, I'm left with an x. And when I divide 4x squared by x squared, I'm left with a positive 4. And you can see if I were to distribute this back in, x squared times x, that gets me back to my x to the third. And x squared times 4, that gets me back to my 4x squared. So you know you've done that right. Okay, for the second part here, I'm going to say, all right, 3x and 12, what's my greatest common factor? Well, I do not have an x in both terms, but I do have a 3 in both terms. So 3 is going to be my greatest common factor. 3x divided by 3 leaves me with an x. Positive 12 divided by 3 leaves me with a positive 4. Now, here's your check. <clears throat> if what is inside these parentheses is the same, then factoring by grouping will work. If what's inside these two parentheses are not the same, then abort, Will Robinson, you cannot go further. You got to go back and figure out how to factor this differently. Okay, but these are the same. And so now here's the, what I find to be very elegant. So now I have this first term and I have this second term. And I say, well, what is common to both? X plus four is common to both. So I'm going to factor X plus four out of both terms. And what I'm left with from my first term is x squared. And what I'm left with from my second term is positive 3. And so this four-term polynomial factors into this. And if I want to check to see if I'm right, I could go ahead and FOIL. Remember our old friend FOIL? Bursts, outsides insides, lasts. So let's take a little moment. First, x times x squared is my x cubed. Outside, x times 3 is plus 3x. Inside, 4 times x squared is plus 4x squared. And lasts, 4 times 3 is plus 12. And there's where I started from. There's my x to the third. There's my 3x, there's my 4x squared, and there's my 12. And the order doesn't matter because in addition, we can reorder those things and everything stays the same. All right, so there is factoring by grouping. 
And just because it is a subject students love to hate, let's do another. Okay, so here I am again. I've got my four-term polynomial. Okay, what's our first step? That's right, we're going to group it. Okay, now watch this. See this minus here? I'm including that in my second grouping because this is a minus six times this X. So I wanna make sure to note that. Just like here, this was a positive three, okay? All right, so there's my group. All right, so now I say, all right, what is the largest thing common to both terms? Well, again, this time, our coefficients don't have anything in common, but our x's do. So we've got an x squared out there, and x cubed divided by x squared leaves me with an x, and minus 3x squared divided by x squared leaves me with a minus 3. Okay, now let's come on over to here. What's common to both terms? All right, a three is common to both terms, but we can do better. A six is common to both terms, and we can do better. Because if we just pull out a six, we're left here with negative x. And that's not what we want. We want to end up with a positive x. So we're going to pull negative six out of both terms. Negative 6x divided by negative 6 leaves us with just our x, looking good. And 18 divided by negative 6 leaves us with that negative 3 we were hoping for. And now we check, are these two things the same? Yes, they are. If we had just factored out a 6, they would not look the same. And we go, hmm, something not working. And we go back and realize, ah, you got to pull out a negative 6. Okay, so now... We're going to pull this out of both terms. X minus 3 comes out. And what's left in this term? Our X squared. And what's left in this term? Our negative 6. And we have now factored this polynomial through grouping. Not so bad, right? I don't know. I find it kind of elegant. So give it a shot. Try it on your own. Uh, again, in the comments, please feel free to leave me topics that you want an extra boost with, and I will put together a video. Meanwhile, have a great day and keep mapping.